Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Lord be with you and also with you let us pray gracious father whose blessed son Jesus Christ came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen, amen. This reading from the book of Numbers continues the story of the Israelites leaving Egypt and now on the threshold of the promised land. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. 
pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul's letter to the Ephesians was written while he was in prison and touches on the love of God that has made us new men and women. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in ages to come, 
he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come into the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen 
that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works so that no one may boast. Paul wrote those words while he was in prison. And those words bring us into focus this fourth Sunday in Lent to grace, to grace. As we have gone through our Lenten journey, we started off with death. Dust you are, to dust you shall return. Repentance, confession, study, preparedness, all of these things that we've been doing through Lent are now converging slowly but surely like streams into a river and the river into the great ocean. Today our focus is grace. Grace. That's been a confusing concept for just about everyone who's ever thought about it or has ever heard about it, who have ever heard it preached. Grace is a gift, an unbelievable gift from God who created us in His image, who created us uniquely different and created us unique. Mathematicians have played around with some of these numbers, and uh, they're stunning. If you look at it mathematically, the odds of any one individual being here, that's anyone here right now, any of you out there, of one of us actually being here is something like 1 in 10 to the 2,185th power. That number is something I cannot comprehend. That number is so outrageously large that we have to conclude that every one of us is here because God wants us here. Created us in His image, individually unique. So why are we here? That existential question that has plagued humanity ever since we've had questions. Why are we here? To paraphrase uh, Jesse Jackson, who said that we might say that everyone is here because God's want, God wants us here on purpose for a purpose. God wanted us here on purpose for a purpose. In my wonderful inquirers class, which I have both so thoroughly enjoyed being with, you have some great spiritual folks in that class. We were talking about purpose today. God's purpose for us. Because God has given us this through grace. He's given us our very lives through grace. Anytime I hear the word grace, I hear amazing grace. How sweet the sound. <laughs> what wonderful words that uh, has been, have been sung here, played here thousands of times over the years, like it has in every church. Uh, it is one of the most recognized songs ever. In order to appreciate that song and appreciate those words, one has to consider again the author of those words. 
I'm sure many of you are well familiar with uh, John Newton who penned those words. John Newton wrote those words. Don't know how much you remember about him, but he was known as the great blasphemer. It has been said of John that there weren't enough vile words in the English language to characterize him as a human being or lack of being a human being. <clears throat> he, he was born to a pretty good mama who wanted him to be a preacher. Well, he took the exact opposite direction and was a terrible child, always in trouble. Finally got conscripted to go on board ship and he was a terrible shipmate. And they said he had one of the vilest languages that anybody had ever heard. He was a sorry, sorry, sorry person. And just to compound that, he will eventually uh, get into the slave trade, and he will be a captain of a slave ship. He will be responsible for untold numbers of human suffering and death as a slave trader. 1745, a terrible storm hit his ship, the Greyhound. Its canvases were ripped, the main mast was split, and it looked like they were going down. They had little hope of survival. Newton strapped himself to the steerage and started having a little conversation with God. Or he had a conversation that he was going to, to, to change his ways. He was going to repent. He was going to be a better person. Well, he survives that, as does his uh, shipmates, with the exception of a couple. Uh, and uh, he's not quite the sorry dog that he was before, but he's still in a slave trade. He will eventually leave that gradually, as I think his conversation with God on that night when he came so close to dying uh, started working on him, little by little by little by little. And I'll be doggone if he doesn't leave the, uh, the slave trade and actually does become a priest. Unbelievable. Hope for all of us. And the priests of that day and that time were expected to write songs uh, and write poetry. And he, remembering that night on the Greyhound when death was imminent, all was lost, he wrote those words that he was saved by amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. He took a little page out of the Bible there because I was lost, but now I'm found. That's from the prodigal son. Here's my son, my beloved. He was lost, but now he is found. And when Jesus heals and restores the sight to the blind man, the blind man says, I was blind, but now I can see. I can see. Amazing grace that saved the life of probably one of the worst human beings of his era. So there is hope for all of us. My dear hero, Frederick Beekner talks about grace a lot. And he says this, Grace is something you can never get but only be given. There's no way to earn it or deserve it or bring it about any more than you can deserve the taste of raspberries and cream or earn good looks or bring about your own birth. A good sleep is grace, so are dreams. Most tears are grace. The smell of rain is grace. Somebody loving you is grace. Loving somebody is grace. Have you ever tried to love somebody? The grace of God means something like this. Here's your life. You might never have been, but you are here because the party wouldn't have been complete without you. Here's the world. Beautiful and terrible things would happen. Don't be afraid. I am with you. Nothing can ever separate us, for it is you that I created the universe. I love you. There's only one catch. Like any other gift, the gift of grace can be yours only if you reach out and take it. And maybe being able to reach out and take 
the gift of grace is grace as well. But St. Paul's words uh, would answer the question for the inquirer's class today. By grace we have been given life and everything in it. We didn't earn a bit of it. We didn't deserve a bit of it. But we are what God has made, in Paul's word, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for our congregation in Cordial, Christ Church, and in our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic, for Holy Spirit the Comforter, and Holy Word in Dahabon, for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Frank, our bishop, for our clergy, Joe, Bill, and Erwin, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our President, Joe, for the leaders of the nations, for our governors, Brian and Henry, for the leadership of the CSRA, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, Augusta, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all health care providers, first responders, essential workers, and all who offer of themselves in service to others, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all those who are serving our country at home and abroad, especially Jonathan, Dylan, Joe, Andrew, Zach, Graham, Toby, Trey, Joe, Sylvian, Jim, Zachary, and Bennett. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the members of our search committee in this parish during our time of self-study and search, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Nick, David, Anne, David, Joyce, Ramsey, Wayne, John, June, Hester, Bobby, Aria, Bill, Margaret, Ricey, George, Lewis, Sid, Bob, Pete, Reba, Keisha, Lois, Alice, Norm, Daryl, Teresa, Bernice, Marty, Barbara, Jeff, Wayne, Jackson, Beverly, Billy, Melanie, Peter, Richard, Sophie, John, Emma, Sage, Eric, Sweetie, Mike, Norman, Marcus, Bobby, Joan, Tommy, Lori, and Odell. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, especially Marcus and Paulette. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Paul and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> peace, peace. Peace.
Well, good morning. So delighted to be with you this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A lot of things going on at St. Paul's as usual, but the biggie today is the Rose Sunday concert led by, is it Maestro? Is that appropriate? <laughs> Maestro Keith Schaefer. Uh, you know his talent and he's put together a team there. Uh, I've just got to figure out some way to hook up my iPad uh, to my stereo system. I want to get the full effect of it. But uh, this is an annual event and thanks Keith for putting that together and we all look forward to worshiping again in music and in song, uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A lot of other stuff going on here. Uh, I bring your attention to those announcements in the bulletin. Uh, things are looking a little better for us in terms of our virus friend that keeps bugging us a lot. Uh, and uh, rest assured that uh, your senior warden and vestry are, uh, are going to respond to uh, these numbers as they improve. So the only thing I can say is stay tuned for further developments. Anything else, team? Good. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By His grace we're able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for Him who died for us and rose again. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. Tonight he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him. The unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, Therefore, let let us us keep keep the the feast. feast. Dear friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Eternal God, Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, you have have graciously graciously accepted accepted us as living living members members of your Son, Son, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body body and blood. Send us now now into the world in peace and and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, always remember how short life is and how very little time we have to gladden the hearts of those that travel along with us. So be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and may the awesome and eternal blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit abide with each and every one of you this very moment and remain with you all the days of your life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.